Hello, this is Anne de Gis. It's uh, March the 19th, 2021, and this is my first video on the virus spreading around the world. I hope you're all doing well. And so let's get the show rolling. So what's happening? It's a roller coaster, and we are really concerned there's a third wave coming back. It's clearly happening in Europe, in South America. The U.S. has slowed down, but we're still at a pretty high prevalence rate. Uh, the good news is that our cases, you know, have dropped uh, to a significantly lower level than the winter. Vaccination rate is significantly up with 2.5 million doses per day. And we have vaccinated uh, 115 uh, million doses with 16% of the population is fully vaccinated. You don't want to miss my second video because I'm going to do a deep dive on the variants that are very concerning in California and New York, as well as the B117 from uh, the England, who is becoming the most common cases, unfortunately, in the U.S. We're also going to do a deep dive on new data that shows the virus is, is attacking the heart and is creating a lot of long-term damage. So uh, please see me on the second video. So what's happening? Uh, history can teach us lessons. Historically, in 1918, there were three waves. And you can see we had that big winter wave like we just went through. We had that massive drop. And there was a third wave in March and April. Same thing happened in 2009, where we had that similar three-wave pattern here. So uh, you can see two weeks ago, we were on the, uh, on the down slopes. And now we the worldwide cases are going back up. And that's being driven by Europe right now. So unfortunately, on a worldwide basis, we've now gone up 23% in the last two weeks. And Brazil is leading the charge as well as Europe. And Brazil now is number two. They've passed India in the number of cases. So we'll spend a bit of time on Brazil and their P1 variant. So in Brazil, they have decided to do lockdown again. Rio uh, has closed their beaches. Hospitals are at 95% capacity. And only 7% of the population in the city has been vaccinated. But you can really see Brazil and Chile uh, have had that huge upsurge there. Mexico is still in good, in, in, in good shape. Brazil has that P1 variant uh, in a city called Manaus, which is right here. It's at the beginning of the Amazon, so it's deep inside uh, the Brazil. Uh, they had up to 75% of the population that got infected last year. The problem is that the variant is evading the antibodies that people have developed. And so they believe that 25 to 60% of the prior survivor are at risk of reinfection there. That variant now has spread to over 20 countries in the world, including the U.S. and Santa Clara here in California. And the reason why this variant is really nasty is because it has a much higher uh, infection rate than the original Wuhan va uh, virus. There is no data enough right now on the impact on the vaccine efficacy. So hotspot is Brazil. You can really see, you know, it's continued to grow up. It went down and then went straight back up. It never went down uh, that much in, in the January, February time zone. Italy, unfortunately, is having another wave. And we'll talk more about Europe. You can see Europe as a whole, you know, slide to slow down the same way we are slowing down. Europe is usually three to five weeks after us, and now it's bouncing back up. Uh, Germany, bouncing back up. Poland, really big curve there. Um, we have, um, whoops, sorry, my computer is being a little bit finicky here. Uh, Fran you, you can see if we look at the growth over a period of two weeks, we have that big upsurge, the same type of curve we, we were having during the winter. So it's a little bit worrisome where it's going. Uh, you can see countries like Poland, France, Italy, the Netherlands, and Germany are clearly in an upswing. Uh, as a result of that, Europe has entered new lockdown. Uh, Italy has uh, put a lockdown between March 15 to April the 6th uh, over the Easter holiday. Uh, France just announced that they're locking down the Paris region for four weeks because the hospitals are 100% capacity. In fact, they're shipping a uh, patient to the Belgian border. Uh, the French Riviera is also in lockdown. Serbia is in a national one-week lockdown. You can see they have that big surge going on. Uh, Poland, same thing, three weeks national one lockdown. So I think it's, it's a lesson for us. They open up probably too quickly. Uh, and, and it basically reignite the virus there and the vaccination rate is less than 10%. So they don't have enough antibodies in the population. Uh, another lesson that came out of Denmark uh, is a Lancet study that showed that people who were infected last year 
the young people, less than 65 years old, had 80% protection from reinfection, so the reinfection rate was only 1% uh, during the period from March to September where they had antibodies. Uh, unfortunately, people over the age of 65 years old, we know that the immune system weakens with aging, and they only 47% protection, so they have a, a risk. They had a risk during that period of six months of 3.6% reinfection rate. So, so you know, if you are on the elderly group, you know, uh, don't assume that if you had if you were infected last year that you cannot get reinfected after six months. Vaccination dose, this is astonishing. We have done over 400 million doses in the world. Uh, the U.S. leading with 150 million doses. We are now doing around 10 million doses per day uh, on a worldwide basis, and it has grown 40% uh, in the last week. China, of course, is also uh, at 65 million. India at 39, and the U.K. is doing a really good job at 27 uh, million. As a result of that, if you look at the percent of the population that has at least received one dose, in North America, we're 21 to 22 percent. Europe is at 13 percent. But look at the rest of the world there. This is an area we have to deal with because if the virus has part of the world that he can continue to evolve and mutate, it's going to come back to us. Vaccines are used differently in different parts of the world. Oxford AstraZeneca has been approved in Europe and in Canada. That's why you see uh, some, and we're going to talk in the second video about some of the issue the vaccine is having with blood clots. Pfizer and Moderna is kind of the leading uh, thing in the U.S. Uh, Sputnik V from Russia uh, is being used in Russia, but they're also using contracts to export this and sell it uh, in South America and Africa. Same thing for China. And, and we're going to talk in the next video, in the clinical video, the fact that it's a diplomacy uh, vehicle there for contracts. And and uh, J&J is just starting to launch in the U.S. And, and, and it's just been approved in other parts of the world. So uh, the U.S. is around 22%. Israel is doing an incredible job. 59% of the population has at least received one dose. And the U.K. is ahead of us with around 38%. Vaccination willingness is a major issue that all the country will have to deal with. Uh, the U.K. has 76% of the population willing to be vaccinated. You can see, you know, they're the best uh, after, after Israel. Unfortunately, the U.S. and France, you know, have a percent of the population that's resistant to the vaccination. And that is going to be an issue for us to get to herd immunity to stop this vaccine, this virus to spread and, and mutate and, and reinfect the population. Uh, on a worldwide basis, Moderna and Pfizer are the leading vaccines that are being used. And you, start, you see the emergence of Oxford, AstraZeneca, and the Chinese and J&J vaccine. So let's look at the U.S., uh, some good news and some bad news. Uh, the good news is that we're still dropping, but the, the rate of decrease has pretty much flattened there. And it was flattened at the plateau of around 60,000. In fact, we dropped as low as 55K several days ago, and now we're going a little bit back up there. And the problem is that at 60,000, that was the level we were at during last summer. And so it, it's, that's still too high uh, for us. We need to continue. Uh, to, to basically drop the cases. And we're still having 1,500 people dying per day, unfortunately. One of the concern is that there's now 15 states where uh, the rate has gone up by over 10%. And that's because we are probably opening too fast. Uh, 17 states have now stopped the mask mandate. Uh, there's a, a, a surge in some of the large uh, cities, uh, like New York, Boston, and Detroit. And we have also three leading things in that uh, risk that we're having right now. The B117, which is the original UK uh, mutation there, which is much more contagious, is now spreading around the US and it's around 35% of the population there, some as high as 50%. So we expect this to be the dominant variant. There's also California and New York, which I will talk much more in the second video, and they are more infectious and more, and more fatal, but more importantly, they can, they can evade the antibodies, so the vaccines are less effective. They're also spreading. It's over 50% of the case in California, and there's a surge in New York. The other concern is the testing rate has dropped from 1.8 million per day to 1 million, and that's a concern because we may be a bit blind to a resurgence there. Uh, the good news is that we are vaccinating as fast as we can, so please get vaccinated. Uh, interesting report from the CDC showed that in the state between March of last year and December, uh, the state that puts a mask mandate, there was a significant drop in the number of cases and in the death rate. So it does work. There's an uptick in uh, several states uh, in the number of cases per 100,000. 
And in New Jersey and New York, unfortunately, are leading the charge. So unfortunately, in the Northeast Corridor, and as you can see in Texas and Florida, are still some of the hot spots. Uh, the good news is our, our positivity rate is very low. And to give an idea, this is where it was two months ago. You can see how red it was in this whole southeast Arizona and Southern California there. So the good news is that right now our infection rate from the tests we do, remember the tests have gone down, has dropped significantly. That's fantastic news. So uh, this is a new graphic from healthdata.gov, which is a new website from the government, and it shows the community transmission at the county level. So it's much more granularity than the state level. And you can see we had this deep problem in the winter there. You can see it was extremely high con contagious there. And it's, it's getting better there, but it's still pretty high. So I think, I think we, need, we need to continue uh, to protect the country. So a study uh, just came out showing what the mortality rate normally is. If you look at the flu season there, you can see we had a bit of a peak in 2017, a really bigger peak in 2017 to 2018. But look at this. This is the COVID-19. It's estimated we got an extra 565,000 deaths because of COVID. And to give you a perspective, that's the equivalent to the number of all cancer deaths per year, which is around 600,000 there. So it, it's unfortunately a tragedy. Uh, a lot of people died. Uh, and the death rate, you can see some states are still, you know, pretty high mortality rate. Uh, and so, so we, we, we're not totally out of the woods yet. Uh, just a quick reminder there, there's a vaccinefinder.org new website that the CDC has unveiled. If you enter your zip code, you should be able to find um, uh, the closest location, especially with all the CVS and some of the new drug chains opening up. So we really want to open up the access to the whole population. Vaccination, it's astonishing. We've done 118 million doses uh, in the last two, two to three months there, you know, and and 67% uh, of the population with the age of 65 has at least received one dose, which is really what we want to do to decrease mortality. So that's fantastic news. And the fully vaccinated is 12% and 23% has received one dose. And we know that if you receive one dose, you already have, after 12 days, you have a, 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 an improvement of the efficacy up to 80%. Not as high as 95%, but you know it really is much more protective. Vaccination rate now is 2.5 million per day, so an amazing ramp up. So congratulations to everybody who helped there. Uh, state vaccination eligibility is all over the places. Uh, you know, California has announced by the May 15, everybody over the age of, 15, of 16 to 18 year old should be able to access a vaccine. Other states have already started opening this up, so check with your state. California has a new vaccination reservation and Blue Shield of California is trying to concentrate and organize that. There's been a, a, a dispute with Santa Clara County and, and a lot of supply, supply shortage. Most of the large systems here had to cancel tens of thousands of appointments there because they couldn't get the supplies. So I think we now have the system in place to inject into the arm. We just need more supplies. California dashboard is great. Look at how it dropped there. I mean, this is really a low rate. That's what we want to see everywhere in the country there is to really get to the really low level at the beginning of the pandemic there. And you can see the positivity rate is only 2%, which is what we want to see. So I think California has done a good job. Part of that is that the administration of the vaccine has been extremely aggressive in the Los Angeles and San Diego where we had the outbreak. And, and you can see we have around 15% of the population is fully vaccinated, which is a bit higher than the rest of the country there, in addition to another 14% that has a partial dose. So as a result, you can see hospitalization rate is dropping, and that's what we want to see, and that's going to drop the mortality rate and, and the severity cases. Some good news, if you look about what did that all do that last year in the planet, we have literally dropped 10% of the greenhouse gas emission. We are below the 1990 level. And that's despite the massive wildfires we had on the West Coast, which unfortunately I was a part of, and which for two months there, we couldn't even go outside because it was so toxic there. To give you an idea, the, the green, greenhouse gases uh, emitted by jet fuel have dropped 33%, transportation has dropped 15%. In addition to that, the electric sector started using more natural gas as a way to make electricity, so that creates less greenhouse gases. So it's the largest single reduction over the last 100 years. So we can do it. We just need to figure out how we can continue to do this. As a result, the wildlife is coming back. And you can see goats. Uh, this, this is in England uh, in the middle of the street. And you have uh, you know, monkeys and turtles that we have never seen for years coming back uh, into the area there where people are living. 
uh, and the whales are coming back because they're not being bothered by all the noise from the cruise boat and all the tourists. The bad news is because a lot of the tourist income has dropped in Africa and certain, certain part of Asia, is that there's an increase of poaching and illicit logging and fishing. There's a COVID baby bust. Uh, you know, in the U.S., it's as much as 10% drop, around 300,000 fewer babies in, in, are expected in 2021. Two-thirds of people planning to conceive have postponed it. And you can see some massive drop, like 13% in France and 22% in Italy. And to talk about Italy, the mortality rate now in Italy is higher than the birth rate. And so that means their population is shrinking without immigration. Uh, the U.S. economy is recovering. Uh, we've gone from 15% unemployment rate to 6.2%. But... The leisure and hospitality industry has been hit pretty hard. And so, I mean, they're not fully recovered, as we all know. Uh, CDC has just announced a change in their guidelines, allowing uh, students in the classroom for K-12 to to be only at three feet. But they still have to wear a mask, and the ventilation has to be adequate. Uh, they also are allowing the school to remove the sneeze guard barrier that a lot of people were having there. Uh, the teachers still have to be six feet apart and the students outside the classroom have to be six feet apart. The HHS is planning to spend $10 billion to put together a program to do continuous testing in the school to basically catch the outbreak before, it's, before it spreads out. That came from two studies, one from, Mass General, from Massachusetts, uh, where they followed 251 schools district and they saw that the infection rate at three feet versus six feet was the same. Another study uh, came from Salt Lake City and, and this is a CDC study, and what they show is that they had problem being able to be six feet apart, and the transmission rate was pretty much the same from three feet to six feet. And you, you can see that in these cases, the three versus six feet had the same infection rate. Uh, the staff, you know, had the high infection rate because they're adults, they have a high risk of infection. Uh, we believe there's a Generation C coming up, which is a COVID generation, which is going to be including people born in 2016, so they are, uh, you know, five years old and up. Uh, to people who are being born now. And uh, the concern we have is mental, uh, mental health. Uh, these people have not been exposed, uh, these young children, they have not been exposed uh, to as many social kids to learn uh, their interaction behavior. Uh, if you're a baby there and when you see your parents and people around you, they have a mask, you're missing a lot of the interaction you need to be able to learn and understand how people feel and how they talk. And so, so we have a concern about the mental health. A lot of the parents are very stressed out and that has an impact on the children there. It is a, a generation that's going to be extremely comfortable with technology because that's how they grew up with. So, so we'll, we'll keep an eye uh, on, on those kids. Uh, so as a result of that, behavioral health is something that's getting really important. Remember, there's been studies showing over half of the population has anxiety and some level of depression. One of the problems is that historically, the behavioral health services were in person. So as a result of that, a lot of them have now moved online. So if you know anybody that needs help, please help them reach out to a telehealth um, uh, visit and support because there's some fantastic new uh, digital help that have been uh, developed over the last year uh, that can help people. So please stay positive, wear a mask, and get vaccinated. And do not miss my second video because I'm going to do a deep dive on the variants. Why, if you're vaccinated, if the variants are around, that will decrease your efficacy there. So you need to take some precaution. And uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Stay healthy.